Larry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to be I late. I was caught on the phone there. How are you, sir? Pretty good. I'm so wired up here for a... Thank you. Well, as you know, this is for a cover story Hi. that will appear the week after next on Mrs. Reagan. That's what I understand. And, uh, this part of it uh, is sort of your perspective on a number of things that have been going on. Uh, the piece, as my other pieces on her have been, uh, will be, shall we say, on the serious side of the First Lady, I hope at least. <coughs> now, she has told me in one of our conversations uh, that she feels these days more like her own person than she did two or three years ago. Do you have any sense of that happening? And if so, how does that appear from your perspective? Well, yes, I'm sure uh, there had been a change a few years ago. Uh, first of all, that absolutely uncalled for uh, attack by uh, some in the media with regard to the refurbishing and painting a few walls in the, in the White House, which hadn't been painted for 30 years, um, that was very upsetting to her and they were painting an image or creating an image that I think even now those who did it realize was a false image and that isn't uh, the way she is or her personality and uh, I think the little episode that happened to me on March 30th uh, she didn't get over it as quickly as I did and um, now, I think the, uh, the other, that image is out of the way and uh, they aren't picking on her mm -hmm. in that way anymore. And I, I think there's been some recovery from a kind of a traumatic shock on the other. So, uh, yes, I think she's, uh, yes, I've been able to see it, that she's uh, more herself. But more her own person. I mean, that indicates some kind of change, not uh, as a woman, not as a, not as a, not in her relationship with you, uh, insofar as man and wife, but a change as a public personality. Well, in that way, yes. To um, after the other was over to now to find uh, herself in the things that she's very much interested in, uh, uh, particularly the program of the young people and the drugs, mm -hmm. uh, which certainly is hers, uh, her undertaking, I mean, and uh, uh, she's most sincere and deeply involved in that, and of course her continuing interest in the foster grandparents program. So I think in that sense, yes, that uh, uh, all those things, uh, they, they were kind of uh, left over here with the other things that were going on, but uh, no, she's, she can't help but be aware of what she's been able to accomplish and do in those fields, and it's even, considerable. Even apart from that, uh, I, I'm not trying to diminish that in any way, but in addition to that, some of your own political advisors have mentioned in private that in the 84 campaign, judging by the data, she was much more of an asset in straight political terms as a public personality than she had been in 80. Uh, she also appeared in public, in the political sense, to be more self-confident and more outgoing. Well, if you'll remember, in 1980, these other things that I was just talking about hadn't, hadn't happened. And uh, since then, in connection with those programs, uh, yeah, she's always, there's been a, a shy side to her. And uh, uh, the, the very calls on her for appearances and for public gatherings and so forth, particularly in connection with the uh, drug programs or the, our programs to uh, eliminate uh, drugs, um, she can't help but uh, have gained a, a confidence about public appearances and so forth in, in doing that. Before, she was very reluctant. To, I remember that very well. Yes. Now, I realize that she still does not involve herself in policy matters, no. economics, foreign affairs, but she does give you advice, and I think she always has, 
on certain important subjects. I'm talking about political and, and administrative subjects. Uh, for instance, she mentioned in one of her conversations with me that uh, after the 84 election, she suggested to you that you consider seriously uh, important changes in the cabinet. Uh, obviously, you, in that case, did not take her advice. But do you seek her advice in such matters? Do you seek her advice more often recently than perhaps in Sacramento or in 81? Well, let me answer this in, in two ways. First of all, a part of the image making that has taken place uh, and false image making has been one of trying some way to suggest that she is uh, some dominant force behind the scenes and, uh, uh, well, the, um, an example of that was that incident at the ranch when someone asked a question of me and uh, I was, uh, I paused for a second about how I was going to answer that and Nancy literally to herself said, well, uh, you know, like that's what we're doing or, or we're something. We're doing the best we can. And she uh -huh. wasn't cueing me to an answer. And actually what happened was, and I'm sure this could happen to anyone, that I heard what she said and I, I thought that's, <laughs> yeah, that's a good answer. <laughs> and I, I repeated it. Well, then to have it played that I was stymied for an answer and she had to uh, cue me, this was all a part of that other thing. So that, let me lay that to rest. Now, on the other hand, uh, uh, we've been married 32 years. Yes, we talk. And yes, I, I don't have any things that I keep to myself. Uh, uh, I'm just that way that I go upstairs and talk about what took place in the day and uh, problems that I'm facing and all. And she talks and I talk. And uh, uh, I just find it that it's very normal. Wasn't there another myth about her years ago, at least as I got to know her in the 80 campaign, uh, I think there was still another myth kicking around, uh, which I, she and I have joked about it. I call it the Miss Goody Two-Shoes myth. <laughs> and uh, she kind of, she almost fed that myth by occasionally coming across uh, not knowing enough or not being interested enough really to even to have opinions. I always felt that she did herself an injustice in that respect. Well. And that, uh, and, and, and more recently, I think as part of this business about her being more her own person, it's become clearer to more people that she has well-informed opinions on some subjects and she yes. certainly is always trying to guard your flanks politically. I think there's no secret about that. No. She's uh, very protective. She is a nest builder with an intense family loyalty that grew out of her own uh, rearing in the doctor's right. family. Yeah, she and I have talked about that too and how she was very eager as a young girl to have a r real family life again yeah. and, and, and all of that. But in the process, uh, don't you have the sense that she is becoming increasingly uh, an advisor in addition to being first lady? <laughs> no, not increasingly or anything of the kind. It's just as I say, we have a, a very open relationship uh, between us. I, I find myself, um, and this has been true as long as we've been married, long before I was in this activity, uh, that uh, I think when something unusual happens or something important uh, in my life or, or that something that I hear about my first, uh, uh, the first thing in my mind is, uh, wait till I tell Nancy. Uh, I just, it's that way between us. And uh, uh, I think again, what you said about the self-effacing thing I think that was a reaction to this image building about somehow that, uh, you know, I, I stand and wait for instructions. That, that goes back to Sacramento. And really. it does. Where your it, opponents were trying to attack you as being, yes. you know, the passive movie actor, yeah. all of that sort of thing. And somebody and wrote so a book would, even and uh, invented all sorts of things about her that uh, were absolutely false. So there's this, what I have 
chosen with journalistic license to call the Miss Goody Two Shoes business is almost a reaction to that other thing. Yes, yeah. Well, she mentioned to me, uh, we've had three conversations, as you probably know, uh, recently for this article, she and I. She mentioned to me that building up to the decision to run again in 84, uh, that you had to court her, I think that was the word she used, uh, into that decision. Now, was that a difficult courtship job? No, not really. Uh, she under, uh, when she understands something that, uh, that I want to do, uh, uh, that settles it. And so th there was never a point, as I understand it, where she was saying, no, let's not, and no. you were saying, yes, we must. Never, no. But she, had, she did have some ambivalence, or some... Uh, reservation or two that you had to uh, work around? Oh, uh, not really, except that it was a thing of remembering 80 and the whole the hassle of the campaign and everything was, uh, uh, you know, are you sure that we really want to do this? That kind of attitude. Well, with the new self-confidence that she shows in public, and here again, I'm, I'm talking mostly about political matters, not so much the uh, anti-drug program, although one may flow from the other. She is saying things that in 80 she would not have said. For instance, in her interview with the Los Angeles Times, she uh, stated a, a view on abortion in those cases of pregnancy caused by rape. Uh, now it, it, made a, it attracted a little attention because she had not spoken on that before. Uh, she has also been more candid, uh, as in the Betty Beal interview, uh, about family matters. Uh, how does that sort of thing sit with you? Uh, no, I understand. The, the thing has, it happens to me, too. I understand when uh, questions start and uh, you can say something that uh, someone grabs on and, and makes maybe more of it than it was in your mind uh, uh, when you said it. Uh, the the question of abortion, for example, I think um, uh, there are facets to that question which people uh, can be unsure of how how they feel. Uh, I have, uh, as I say, I for me, and I and I think she accepts this. The only. The only way that I can justify abortion is in self-defense. We recognize, in other words, abortion is the taking of a human life, in my view. And no one has been able to introduce any evidence that that unborn child is not a human life. Does, does a, a few minutes between actual birth and prior to birth mean that something has suddenly come alive that wasn't alive a few minutes before? And so to me, I say, well, when could it be justified? Well, in our Judeo-Christian tradition, self-defense has always been justification for taking life. So I have felt that, a, that the expectant mother, if that actually threatens her life, has a right uh, to, de to protect her life. Now. I know that a number of people feel much the same way about abortion. But then they say, well, now, wait a minute, self-defense, uh, could that include other things? Uh, just as you would have an ability to defend against rape, do you have a right to defend against the results of rape? Well, I'm content in my own mind that the life of the mother is, uh, is the the one justification for it. And I think that in answering that question, and Nancy was probably saying just what I have said here. You could take this if you wanted to and isolate it from any of the rest of the conversation, and I could see a headline appearing, <laughs> President says uh, uh, abortion is justified if, well, I haven't said that at all. Mm -hmm. As I've told you, I think it is a human life that is being taken. Well, that interview uh, in which she used the term estrangement and then your son Michael's response led to a series of phone conversations between you and Michael. Uh, in retrospect, 
Did that turn out to be a good thing? Did that sequence of events perhaps clear the air between you two and, and, and serve to repair any, any bit of static? And I speak as, of course, as a fellow with three sons of my own, and I know how these things can go. Well, uh, again, none of us are going to... What she was principally trying to say simply was that the whole summing up of it was that we're not going to talk about family affairs. So I'm not going to violate that either. But um, uh, we'll, we'll be together soon. Uh, we go to California. And uh, we're just not going to, not going to comment. Mm -hmm. well, you know, many people have remarked on the unusual uh, strength of your marriage, uh, how close you two have always been. And you said on camera during the campaign, I believe, that you can't imagine life without her. Uh, do, do you think as part of that, that Mrs. Reagan sometimes feels or acts overly protective where you're concerned? <laughs> you, you alluded to that yourself a moment ago, in effect that she sometimes acts in a maternal way towards you. Well, no, I can just tell you that this, there is a, a great sense of, of loyalty that she has and extends to family, uh, all of us. And uh, yes, she, uh, I'm quite sure she just couldn't help us. As I say, she's a nest builder. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, she, uh, can't help herself from uh, from feeling protective in that way. And uh... well, it's been suggested by any number of pop psych artists that uh, another side of this unique relationship between the two of you is that your children, particularly the older two, have sometimes felt, in effect, left out. That you two were so close and so self-sufficient emotionally. Uh, what do you think of that kind of speculation? I don't think so. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, I think they, as they've grown up a little, they all understand because they have discovered that uh, the same protection and protective feeling goes to, to, to all the family. Uh, no, I, uh, I don't think that or that, that uh, uh, any of them feel it. Uh, the, the bonds are very close, and uh, and I you refer to this as an unusual relationship. Well, I happen to think there are just millions of marriages throughout our country, and many more, I'm sure, throughout the world. But uh, I know a great many people that I think have that same bond of love and that same close relationship that we have. But yes, we're both very fortunate. Well, then again, she always says that you're the eternal optimist of the two. And that's <laughs> sort of part of her function yes, to uh, leaven that a little bit. With yes, and I, always tease, and I always tease her about worrying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's almost kind of a family uh, joke in the family. Uh, uh, she uses a line from a joke sometimes uh, about me which, uh, when I say something optimistic. By the same token, I... Uh, uh, I joke at her that uh, she worries if she hasn't got something to worry about. And what is the joke that she uses? <laughs> uh, Larry, I can't tell It's always good to end these things with a joke. What? It's always good to end these things with a joke. No, I, I, I can't, uh, can't tell her. But it's a joke that just is based on uh, optimism versus pessimism among two It's not stars. the old pony story, is it? Uh, are you going to print that? Don't. Well, I printed the pony story several times. It's, it's, <laughs> well, it's something it's the like old that. old pony story. I like got that. you. Okay. <laughs> On that, we'll end. Thank you very much, Mr. President. <laughs> Happy New Year. All right. Well, bump into you out there. Be persuaded to be Santa Claus over at the Lakes the other night. Mm -hmm. Every year, some, one of the guests has to be Santa. So, so who was that? Huh? So who was Santa this time? Nancy. Nancy was Santa. <laughs> uh, the, uh, Took a lot of persuasion. persuasion. <laughs> uh, what's that? Certainly. Thanks again. Okay. okay.